gardens in the film, the mega garden. What was the fragrance? Yeah, a bit to depict a garden. I'm thinking mostly mine. Mm -hmm. So I've picked some things that grow in our what, what <coughs> our US watchers would call a yard. Because the garden's much, much, garden's more like Kew. Yeah. But a yard in the UK doesn't have any ground in it that grows anything. No, it's a, it's a, a bit of flags. Yeah. All these days, concrete. So you can get, get yeah. out there, smoke a fag, and hang your washing up to dry. But otherwise, yeah. not much. But yes, there is greenery in my little garden. You know how it is in, in London if you say something like, in my garden, and people just go... <laughs> yeah, but it's a long way out. Yeah. Um, but. Yes. In my garden, we've got plastic grass. I know. There's quite a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of plastic grass around these days. It's just horrible. I, it's not. It's not one of my favourite things. No. Talking of grass, though, I didn't get that. This is three hexagonal. Then you, we must get. We'll, it. we'll, we'll get that. Yeah. <clears throat> Cis 3 hexanol. Um, Cis 3 hexanol is, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very re instantly recognisable. It is, uh, of course, it's uh, not instantly findable. No. Um, but, it, if you, um, but if you smell something grassy, you say, oh, that's got Cis 3 hexanol in it, it makes you sound very, very like you know what you're talking about. It does. You know, I, there isn't any there, oh. so I'm going to do without it. Because, that's another point, you can get obsessed in perfume with, with a thing, you think you need this thing in order to be a mate, to make you, and it won't be the same, you just make something different, I think. Well then, let's work, with, let's yeah. work within our restrictions. Yeah. The we'll Sisfree Hexanol is downstairs. Yeah. We'll work with what we have We could today. pause it. Let's just... No. I, you know, it's quite tricky to work with and it just makes everything smell of cut grass. And I've got some I've got some very challenging things here to work with. That would be just okay. another one. So if we want greenery oh, I'll give you greenery. I'll let you smell something green because there's lots of stuff up here today as you see. Because last week we did the spring school and I have not one hundred percent tidied. Mostly because I think I want to move all of this up here, so I don't want to take it downstairs again. Let me go. See what you think that is. <clears throat> oh wow! Oh wow! And green enough for you? Um, I have got. Oh, ah, oh, it's on the tip of my tongue. Celery. Yes. Yes. And so it was indeed. Um, celery. This is actually called celery herb essential oil. Mm. And it is the funny thing is it smells so sort of pure and clear and right on the nose that you'd almost think it was an aroma chemical because mm. it's it smells like one it's, thing. And uh, this is it, it reminds me more of a celeriac than it does a piece of celery. And I think celeriac's named that because it smells like it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> it's got to be surely. Yeah, I think so. So, and not now, to be confused with someone who's gluten intolerant, of course, no. who's a celiac. Being celiac, but but it's yeah. from calling celiac celeriacs. So, not for them though, <laughs> just for you probably. <laughs> well, that's why they stopped talking to me. No, I don't believe it. No one stops talking to you. Um, okay, interesting things we could put in. Actually, there isn't any celery growing in my garden, but it was handy. It's a very good, um, it's a good thing to use in recipes, isn't it? Celery. I, I really, really like it. I, I like it cooked. I like it roasted. Oh, I've not done that. I know what this is as well. Yes. This is fennel. It is fennel and this does grow in my garden. I didn't plant it, I don't think, but it grows. The trouble is it grows between paving stones. Wow. So I, where I can get the seeds off it. Mm -hmm can't get actual fennel because that all grows, yeah, I can't eat it, I can't harvest it because it grows underground. But you can chew the leaves, can't I you? I can chew the leaves, if I, if I want, yeah. This is um, nice. So this is an essential oil as well. I like also a, oh, quite, fennel. 
It does. Well, you put fennel in, it immediately makes everything smell like licorice. Yeah. Which is for some people and not, not for other people. Also, absinthe. That's a bit. Mm. That's a bit. But that's aniseed, isn't it? No, absinthe is a separate herb, which is wormwood. Uh, yeah. But but you think it smells wormwood like... smells like aniseed, does it? Yeah, it's aniseed flavour, isn't it? Really, absinthe. Ah, I think what happened. We could get technical about this. Let's. When when it when it got banned, I heard this from the guy who in first imported. Well, he got he got uh, absinthe made legal in the EU. Mm. It's called George, lived in Hertfordshire, uh, in a converted barn that has its own peacocks. Oh wow! Um, yeah. So he he uh, he had I think it's called Fabert his company. But anyway, the. Uh, when it was banned in Europe, they started drinking anise instead. Right. So that was sort of the closest. Mm -hmm. I'm not... Mm, I've drunk absinthe. Oh, yeah. It took about four days before I felt normal. But then it's a <clears throat> neurotoxin. So what do you expect? There you go. Thank you. Um, this is... Lavender. It's in the same region. Okay, it is. You would find it probably in the same gardens, or in the same window boxes. Ah, oh, it's really not. Ah, uh, oh, is it? I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick myself, aren't I? Possibly. Ah. So I kick you instead. Yeah. It's geranium. Of course it is. It's the rose geranium. Yeah, of course it is. This is why this this stuff is so difficult. Oh, um, I love it. Yes. Also, I'm just getting out a whole load of things which are quite... Is this geraniol? No. That is, in fact, a natural essential oil of geranium. Right. Rose geranium. Yeah, which is... Which is... Which is, is it a... It's a geranium, but it, it smells of roses. Is it, it smells a, more rosy. Is it a sen skin sensitizer? Is it yeah. in, it's in ingredients, isn't it, geraniol? Yes. Yeah. It's in the it's in the um, allergen list. The allergen list, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, geranium, the rose geranium, is also known as Bourbon geranium because it's grown on the island of Réunion, which used to be called Bourbon, and uh -huh. now it's well, it's now called Réunion because it changed its name. Uh, this Ooh, though, this is nice, it's mm. fresh, it's very fritch. Mm -hmm. um, this is a bit, this is mildly cruel of me. It's run away now. I can't smell it. I smelt it at first and now it's gone. It's, this is the geranium. Oh, is it? Yeah. Oh. Since you mentioned it, I thought it was here, I thought I'd get it out. But isn't oh, it, so isn't it very smooth and yeah. soft and... It's almost, it, it, it feels almost like it's in the same family as Isoe Super and stuff. It's very, yes, very light and ethereal and like, you, there, there's a lot more going on in geranium. This is a lot more yeah. spiky. This is... It's like a gentle. cloud. You could, you could, would you use that as a, as a cloud type thing? Oh, I'm beginning to think probably yes. I'd have to. Because I can't work out. Work with it. I can't work out if it's if it's so subtle because I've just smelt geranium. Or... No, it is. It is pretty smooth as they go. Yeah, nice. Um. So at the moment, I'm just, I'm just, I'm taking you through. I'm taking, walking us through things that we could put. In a garden fragrance because they're there, and like the reason it. for this is because um, Monsieur Jean Claude Elena, master perfumer, writer of some very very interesting books about perfumery, <coughs> when he worked for Hermes or Hermes, if you're not French, he uh, he was the in-house perfumer and he made a series of fragrances based on gardens. Uh, now the one I made called the Jardin de Monsieur McGregor, that's a sort of, you know, an homage to mm. the style. This is tea. There is this in a lot of tea scents. It's, it is, don't tell me. It's the thing that's in Earl Grey. 
Now which is... Uh, uh, you're so close. I mean, you're, you're circling around it hmm. because this is in the thing that's in Earl Grey. Oh, it's, so it's is, in Bergamot. Yes, it's in Bergamot. It's also in Lambda. It's oh, in it, a lot of things. This it? is sla... Lin... Linoleum. Linoleol, yes. Linoleol. It is the ol, it's an alcohol. So Linoleol. Of the, of the linolo tree. We had spent linolo berry once, the, one of the Mexican um, hmm. materials, and it, that's absolutely... Oh, good. yeah. So there is a linoleol. Linoleol, it's an alcohol. Mm. So if it says ol on the end, it's a... I mean, you can't drink it. Not that yeah. kind of alcohol. Yeah. Pe chemical group alcohol. So this is is this diluted? This is diluted to ten percent. So was the geraniol, and I mean everything we've smelt so far. I but think, it is but it comes as a liquid. Yeah, but it's <laughs> rather it. Yeah. Okay. So it's an alcohol. Um. Yes, but I mean. Alcohol that we think about is ethanol. Yeah. All the alcohol that we think the alcohol in wine is ethanol. The alcohol in whiskey is ethanol. Mm -hmm. The alcohol in um, I don't know fizzy lemon cocktail thingy bottle is ethanol. Is ethanol. These are all completely different alcohols, but they just have the alcohol right, okay. functional group on the end of the the molecule. Okay. And um, that is um, that really is very interesting. Um, because that really is the heart of Earl Grey, smells like. Mm -hmm. You'd be not wrong. It's right in the Add middle of it. Add a few citrusy things to it and suddenly you get mm. bergamot. Add... I really well, like it. It's also... It's... Rosewood is almost totally this. And whole wood is almost totally this. Oh. Rosewood's a lot more expensive. So quite often... If you see rosewood listed as a note, what's actually in there is linalool. Right. So it's again, it's another allergen, but it's not restricted. It's like once it's in, it's in. Mm -hmm. So it, it, having less of it's not going to make any difference. So if it's in there above 0.01 percent, it's listed on the label. Mm -hmm. So um, we might as well. Let's, yeah. The most important part of this. Today is the Hedione. That's where we're going. Because there's nothing like, if you want something to smell fresh, light and natural, you put in methyl dihydrojasminate, which is Hedione, um, which was first used in Eau Sauvage by Edmond Rudnitska. And it was, I always do that. You just can't not. Mm -hmm. um, it's like really licking the spoon when you're making some kind of yeah, mixture. Absolutely impossible. Well, I did manage once to do that thing with a donut where you don't lick your lips all the way through. Did you? The start of it, yeah. Wow. I think it's having played the clarinet, I have, you know, more. This is going to come out wrong. <laughs> no, it doesn't matter. But you can, you have a more conscious of um, having control over, over your tongue. Yes. Do you um, have a LinkedIn page? Yes. I think you should put that on your LinkedIn page. Yeah. That you've managed to eat a donut. The other thing I could do is eat a cream cracker in less than... Was it, eat three cream crackers in a minute. That used to be a challenge. Uh, why is that a challenge? Because it's dry? Yes. People get it wrong. They try to just crunch them. And what you have to do is go... Until they're soggy, then swallow them. Gulp it. <laughs> yeah. God, that's that's so gross. Yeah, one at a time. No. It's um, like... A cream cracker. I, oh, as in Jacob's. Like, um, like a Jacob's, yeah. yeah like Jacob's a, a water Jacob's. biscuit. Oh no, that's a cream See, cracker. A water biscuit's cars. Yeah, cream cracker, Jacobs. Yeah. But when when I were a kid and there weren't much to do, you know, because there were no internet, uh, that used to be the kind of thing one challenged one's friends to do. I think that sounds like time well three spent. Cream crackers in a minute. Uh, yeah, like Things we learnt to do at school because there is no, there was no internet. Yeah. Uh, okay, so this is Hedione. And I get almost nothing from Hedione, but I've learnt to use it. I've learnt what it does. Does anyone not get almost nothing from Hedione? Yes, I've got. I thought. I thought it was everybody. I thought it was sort of impossible to smell. And I'll hand the strips round the room sometimes, and I used mm. to call. I used to label it just fresh air, <laughs> uh, and 
you know, you get this impression of, of sort of freshness and airiness if you use it. And people will come to the workshop and they go, oh, it smells really flowery. And I was thinking, is that? And other people, oh, I get more like, I think it's more sort of lemony and fresh. Like, wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. So, but for me, I got nothing, work. really. No. No. But also, it's a nice recently, nothing. Y yeah. Yes, yes, pleasant nothing. Yes. <laughs> Uh, and that, but that's you know what's being discovered now in perfumery. Probably the next direction is discovering all these things which don't actually have an aroma. So nobody's really used them in perfumery, but they make other things smell stronger. And now you won't, you don't know which yeah. is which of your okay. No, I don't know. <laughs> but I picked up the celery herb because I oh, yeah. bite on mine because yeah, you know, I, I, mean, I, I find everything that easily. Down. Also, I like an excuse to use my fountain pens. Maybe that's why I made the rule to write everything down. Here we go. But, yeah, celery herb by itself, then celery herb with hedione. Hedione. Not hedione, tout le monde. Just hedione. Looks like heady one, really. Mm. Yeah. So, celery herb by itself. Celery herb with head here and suddenly goes, oh, hello, mm. I am, I've got dressed up to go out, is what I feel. Yeah, it also goes less, it gets less foody. Mm. It's less, it smells less like you're smelling a soup. I'm going to take geranium and add the head here. Because this is, this is just to get a general idea, this of course we didn't measure how big the drops were or the dips. It suddenly smells, as opposed to smelling like a geranium essential oil, it smells like a geranium perfume. Mm, mm. That's the thing that it does. Yeah, so Hedion's is magic. Yes. So part one, part one of this month's task, because to deal with Hedion, that's, that's a lot of task. Mm. So I think we'll carve it up. So if this is part one, of the Hedion Month task mm -hmm. it is to choose some materials that you might find in, if you haven't got a garden, don't worry, think about things that grow in the local park, think about things that uh, grow <laughs> in, in an imaginary garden, you can have your own imaginary garden, <clears throat> I mean things I've chosen, I've got Narcissus here which does not grow at the same time as the black currants, whatever, but I've got an assemblage which we'll put together mm -hmm. um, and see what happens when you put hedione with a thing just observe what it does the next thing is to say take the geranium and the celery herb and see what they smell like together so this is the skill section rather than the former section or, or, or two of it anything he's throwing them on the floor <laughs> I should, what I should do is be kind and write the names on before I give you them. Hey, look, I, uh, I live life on the edge. I don't know what I've got, I don't know the what I'm going to get when I pick up. The strips live on the edge as well, they yeah. just all fall and fall. Look, don't, don't live life like, like the, the, way, the way that you um, make the strips live life because otherwise you'll fall off. Mm -hmm. So I've got the celery herb and the geranium together, <laughs> which are quite... No. Nope. Hmm. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> they work. Selenium. Oh selenium, you're breaking my. Geranium. Oh no! Wait, geranium. <laughs> and then, and then, uh, and then I'm adding in the hair dion. <laughs> I don't know if I'm smelling the right thing. No, you didn't. You totally oh, right, there's Hedion. No. <laughs> I think I might give you another Hedion strip because that's sort of... It's cute. Well, it's the one that doesn't smell to me. Yeah. Oh, well, it could be that one. <laughs> it could be smelling raw hands, I mean. But let's just see, what does Hedion do? What does it do? It... Because then we're going to think about the different quantities you can use it in. I mean, I, I made a perfume for somebody and it it got nominated for an award. And it when we first did it, 
it was I didn't realise it was going to be launched, you know, because quite often we'll sort of play with things that people like, and they go, I think I'll bring that one out. We go, oh, okay, right, okay, let's get serious. So we, uh, it had a lot of Clary Sage in it, it has, and it was um, just, it was restricted, quite restricted. Isn't it hallucinogen, Clary Sage? Uh, yeah, I think that's another, um, yes, you're absolutely right, it's another um, neurotoxin, isn't it? That's right, yeah. That's what they do. Um, so, in order to make it safer, there's one thing you can do with Hedia because it's totally unrestricted. If you want to just make something a bit safer, you can stick a bit of Hedia in and tip it back over the side of safety. Mm -hmm. And so we did that, but then what we discovered was not only did it make it safer, it went, it filled the room. This thing just, well, what, it got massive, it went huge. And that's when I start thinking about Hedion even more than I did before, as it, it, it can take a perfume, just expand it. Mm, mm. And that, that's the way that it appears. What it actually does in the head, apparently, is it uh, suppresses some of the responses that we get. Mm. But it, that then seems to make some of the other things really, really stand out with great clarity. Right. So Hedion is, if you get something that's described as transparent fragrance, it's Hedion just sort of blowing all of these things apart so you can see between them or you can, mm. you can feel through them. It's got this, um, it fills all the gaps, but it fills it with something transparent so you can see mm. through it. Does that make some sense? Yeah. That is an interesting noise from the dustbin downstairs. Yeah. I think Nick's just doing the recycling. It's fine. I think it's fine. Um, so yeah, task one is you, 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 can, you can commit to bottles, but it to try it on strips first, or um, you know, just drops for people who are uh, you know short of budget, because things with Hedion. Things with Hedion. So first of all, balance. I actually think that. Rose geranium at 10% and fennel at 10%. They go pretty well one to one, so I'm just going to do that. So I'm going to repeat our little experiment. We did um, it was celery before, not fennel. Oh, yeah, so I did. All right. So let's see what fennel one. does. Got, <laughs> yes, let's see what fennel does. Thank you. Where was I? Uh, we're going to have all the recycling. Oh, this is good. This, this demonstrates that we clearly do strip all the sellotape off our boxes and recycle mm. it all on a Wednesday. Um, so you can smell that. Oh, they go well. Yeah. So, so that was fennel. That was, yes. Um, fennel geranium, so it is, is um, foranium. Foranium. Foranium, yes. That's the one. That's what we're going to call foranium, which is nice. Really it's, nice. Because it doesn't smell that fennelly, I think it doesn't. It doesn't go all licorice-y. No, it really and, doesn't. And in the meantime, since the camera stopped, because you know it basically fell asleep, we added equal parts. So we put on Hedion. Wow. Fifteen percent, which sort of then makes it smell like a perfume. I mean, that is uh, that's wearable. I'd have to run it through the IFRA software just to make sure with the fennel and the drain have been there, but... Uh, oh, wow. It's really good. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> so, I mean... It's just uh, You're right when you say it just adds space. Mm. Clarity. Clarity adds clarity. And it, But it feels like it's been sort of lightly polished as well, I'd say. Yeah. So... Um, it's a polished space adding clarity. Yes. That's exactly what it is. It's the <laughs> peace hack. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm coming up with some terrible ones today. No, uh, that's not. It's the yeah. No, it, it's not what it is. Pizza. Pizza. Well, like you collect uh, pizza when you yeah 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 of course collecting peas it, yeah. and and uh, you eating. Pizza. Yeah, that's what you yeah. do. I'm, and, um, my mother did that in the school holidays. You know, that's what she used you to do. You used to collect peas. Used, yeah, yeah. That's what that's what the British used to do in their in their summer holidays from. Uh, yeah. Like, so they used to go out and, and pea pick. But she was so small, she couldn't pick her own sack up. She used to have to pay the half sixpence that she would have got. She would have had to give threatens to one of her sisters to carry it for her. Anyway. I so, do miss a 
no one really picks black currants anymore. Uh, well, somebody must, because otherwise we'd have no Ribena. This is true. Um, yeah. That's probably enough for this one, then. Do you want to... Oh, so we're going to be back with part two? Back with part two.